Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and this is the iPhone 6 Plus. In my iPhone 6 review, I mentioned that by upgrading to it from an older iPhone, you get a bunch of the benefits that naturally come with a larger display and an overall larger device. With the iPhone 6 Plus, all of these differences, all the pros and all the cons, are magnified, they're amplified by an even bigger device. So if you're trying to decide between the 6 and the 6 Plus, hopefully I can help you by going over these benefits and drawbacks as someone who's used both phones. Benefit number one, larger display. So the iPhone 6 Plus has a 5.5 inch 1080p display versus the iPhone 6's 4.7 inch, which means everything you look at on the screen, everything you interact with, the panel that you're staring at all day is bigger. So you get a bigger keyboard for an easier typing experience, especially if you have big thumbs like me. You can watch videos bigger and game bigger and browse the web bigger and read more documents bigger. Basically anything consuming media is bigger. It doesn't necessarily show more information, but it shows the same amount of information in a larger and generally more enjoyable way. Plus if you have games and videos that are 1080p, the 6 Plus will fully take advantage of them. Now, despite how huge this display is, Apple doesn't really do a whole lot in iOS 8 to take advantage of the extra real estate besides the extra row of icons and reachability. So really, essentially, it's just a blown up version of the iPhone 6 experience, which is fine. I just wish they'd done a little bit more, like I mentioned. But one thing you can do on the iPhone 6 Plus that you can't do on the 6 is home screen rotation anywhere. So you can go 90 degrees to the right, or you can go 90 degrees to the left if you want. Or sometimes, and I don't even really know why you would do this, but you can go completely upside down 180 degrees. In fact, sometimes I end up taking it out of my pocket and unlocking it and it's already upside down and I have to wait for the animation to flip back. Honestly, I think it's pretty silly. I think they should remove the upside down rotation. But yeah, home screen rotation is a thing. And yeah, you also get a slightly more spaced out keyboard. So it's much better and much more efficient when you're in landscape on the 6 Plus, complete with its own copy and paste buttons, which is too bad because I never type in landscape. Benefit number two, a bigger phone means you have a bigger space for a bigger battery. So the iPhone 6 Plus has a huge 2,915 milliamp hour battery. I say huge because it is way bigger than the one in the iPhone 6. And the immense battery life is one of the best traits of the iPhone 6 Plus. I can basically guarantee you'll never kill the whole battery from 100% to zero in a single day. And you can't say that about many phones. And there have been plenty of times where I do two full days of light use uh, while forgetting the charger or something overnight. I still have battery to spare for the second day. I typically get seven to nine hours of usage or screen on time. Uh, but again, it's there have been plenty of days where I get way more than that and I don't use the phone as heavily. Take this day, for example, when I was mostly using it as a camera all day and had the six and a half hours of usage with 61% battery left at the end of the day. Basically, this thing is a battery champ go to sleep with 50% charge, you'll wake up with that 50% charge, stand by for days. And the only con here really is that it takes a little bit longer to charge up. Benefit number three, optical image stabilization. This is huge. The iPhone 6 camera was already really good, uh, but having more space inside the body of the iPhone 6 Plus gives some space for some bigger camera optics, meaning they fit optical image stabilization in the iPhone 6 Plus. This is stabilization done with hardware which is different from stabilization done with software. It's the actual elements of the lens moving around to compensate for your shaky hand rather than software stabilization that a lot of other phones have that doesn't work nearly as well. The result is two things. One, the iPhone 6 Plus becomes a low light beast, allowing the shutter to stay open a little longer to capture more light without blurring the image. Uh, and this combined with optical image stabilization makes some of the best low light shots I've ever seen from a phone with no flash. And two, OIS is awesome for video. You can take a super shaky shot and make it seem slightly less shaky, or even take a slightly shaky shot and make it seem like it's on a tripod. So you can move around a lot more and have a lot less fear about getting the shot you want from a fast moving object or a subject that's moving all over the place. Basically, the iPhone 6 Plus now takes some of the best 1080p video from any smartphone uh, and also takes some of the best photos from any smartphone, period. And as a pixel peeper, I love that. So downside number one, Optimized apps. This is something that's getting better every week, but it's the same situation as the iPhone 6, like I mentioned in the review, but again, magnified even more. It's a 1920 by 1080 display, and you would think that, you know, that's a pretty standard uh, aspect ratio and resolution, shouldn't have any problems, but apps that haven't been updated for this new phone look either fuzzy or wonky and weird, so developers, 
get on that quick. Downside number two, slipperiness. So this is a big phone. The iPhone 6 Plus has rounded edges all the way around like the iPhone 6, and it's even bigger. So you're gonna have to manipulate it around more often to reach all the corners of the display, especially if you're one-handing it, which you're probably not. But so this is the one phone where I would really recommend covering it in some way to at least get a better grip or make it easier to hold in the hand. I mean, a tall, super thin, rounded slab isn't exactly ergonomic, Apple knows that. But they do have some first party case options. They have a leather case in a couple colors, which I think looks pretty nice from the video reviews I've watched. So that I will link below. My preference though, as I've said before, is a skin just to change the texture of the device, but not add much thickness at all. So I'll leave a link to that. This is a dbrand skin right below. Again, they have a couple different colors and you can choose which one you like best from there. Downside number three, bend gate. And I'm only including this section because it seems like anyone who's ever seen my phone and asked me about the iPhone 6 Plus always seems to have a follow-up question about whether it bent or not. So for the record, no, mine hasn't bent and I don't expect it to because I'm careful with my phone. But listen, it's an expensive electronic device. You paid a lot of money for it, don't sit on it don't put a lot of pressure on it, and watch my Bendgate explainer video if you wanna know more about that. I got the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus at roughly the same time, and I took the iPhone 6 out the box first and played with it and started using it a lot and set it up, and then I took the iPhone 6 Plus out the box and immediately knew that I liked it more than the iPhone 6. I don't know if it was the feel in the hand or just the fact that I'm more used to devices this size uh, than the smaller iPhone 6. Whatever it was, I am one of billions but I like personally the iPhone 6 Plus more. So that's why I picked it and that's why I chose it more. And you can choose if the benefits that I showed you are worth more than the drawbacks uh, to you, but that's been my overall thoughts on the iPhone 6 Plus. So that's been it. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.